Hello everyone and welcome back to Coded by Jade. In this video, I'll be discussing how I actually got 4 out of 5 offers to study computer science at university. I know that computer science is becoming an increasingly fiercely competitive course, so I hope this video will help you reflect more on your application and encourage you to stay optimistic about your application. Before I continue this video, be sure to like this video and subscribe to see more content. And this video is part of my Preparing for University series, so be sure to check out my playlist on that to find more videos, such as how to write a great personal statement and laptop budgeting for computer science students. Okay, so for reference, I applied to Bristol, Bath, Cambridge, Manchester and Nottingham for the three year G400 computer science course and I managed to receive offers for Bristol at A star AA, Manchester again for A star AA, Bath for AAA with an, or an A in my EPQ or an A in my AS level further mathematics and Nottingham for AAB with an A in computer science. And I was interviewed at Cambridge for an A star A star A offer, but unfortunately I didn't receive an offer after interview. The first step to receiving these offers were my GCSE grades. GCSE grades aren't the be all end all, but it is an important factor for admission officers to assess an individual's application and they help put things in perspective. For example, admission officers contextualise GCSE grades against your school cohort for that year. The best way to describe this is that a candidate with a lot of nines in a cohort of other um, candidates with fours and fives, for example, is considered to be a stronger than a candidate with a lot of nines with a cohort that also achieved a lot of nines. Additionally, eights and nines are generally both considered the same thing. So on the screen, I've got all the compulsory GCSEs I did and also the options I took. And the options you take don't necessarily matter, but I quite enjoyed taking further maths as it made the beginning of A-level mathematics a lot easier. Next was A-level choices. My A-level choices aren't quite typical of a um, normal computer science student, but I actually found that this didn't hinder my application at all in a way that I thought it would. Of course, I have the compulsory, uh, well, for most universities anyway, A-level maths. And I also took A-level business, A-level computer science and the EPQ. And I actually felt like these A-level choices were quite good in helping me with my um, computer science application and even um, learning about computer science in general and how tech companies work and etc. So the A-level business didn't hold me back and it actually gave me such a great advantage that I'm really grateful for. Around December of year 12, I actually decided that I wanted to self-study AS Further Maths and I ended up actually taking this qualification at the end of year 13. And I didn't decide this in a way that you may think. A lot of people decide to take AS Further Maths to help with their application, but I actually took AS Further Maths because I wanted to learn more about discrete mathematics in a way that I wouldn't learn at all in A-level maths and that you only learn briefly in A-level computer science. So my AS Further Maths choices for the OCR MEI qualification were the Core Pure, Discrete Maths and Mechanics Part A. And my favourite, of course, of the Core Pure, actually. And I also enjoyed the discrete maths. I enjoyed the mechanics, but this is the one that I actually found the hardest, as I don't do A-level physics. The next step that helped me get a lot of offers was exploring my interest in computer science. Now, this was both helpful in helping me write my personal statement. And as I've said before, if you want to learn how to write a great personal statement, then this will be linked in the information box, which you can click after the end of this video. And it also just helped me confirm that I actually enjoyed um, computer science as a subject and want to take it further at university. So the sources I used were brilliant.org, and this was just a free version, not the paid version, computer file on YouTube, uh, Project Eula, coding projects, and I also used Isaac Computer Science as they had some master classes which you could attend. My favourite one of which was the cryptography master class at Bletchley Park where I learned about World War II cryptography and Alan Next, I think this is one of the most important aspects of how I got offers to study computer science at university. And this was both 
allow me to do the admissions test, keep up with my grades and apply all at the same time without feeling overwhelmed. And this was time management skills. And I cannot stress the importance of this enough. This is what helped me be able to keep top grades exceeding my university offers as I was able to stay on top of things and not fall behind. And the top tool I used was an academic journal and this was a data view journal. And in each day I used to write all the things I had to do and make sure I could do them as soon as possible. And it basically outlined everything that I could do, whether it was compulsory or even additional things I could do to further my education. And around exam times, rather than um, just having like the exam rotor, I actually had an exam timetable and I wouldn't write the exam um, alone. I would also write like different topics that I should be focusing on. And this was in conjunction with a retrospective study planner. And finally, the times where I wasn't as motivated to study, especially as the pandemic hit when there was a lack of certainty over whether we were even going to do exams or not, was the Pomodoro timer technique. And this allowed you to do, I think, 25 minute chunks of work and then you take short breaks just to make sure you stay motivated and you don't become overwhelmed with all the work to do. And on the topic of admissions tests, these are the types of admissions tests that you may have to do when applying for computer science at university. For Oxford, it's the MAT. For Cambridge, it's the C2MUA at all colleges and the CSAT at some of the colleges, including the one I applied to, which was Queen's College. And there's other Imperial um, admissions tests I've heard of, so the Imperial Computer Science admissions test and STEP maths. So the important part about admissions tests is to start preparing at somewhere in the middle to end of year 12 and by preparing I mean during that time I mean like looking at the specification of what you have to do and then during summer is when you start preparing in more detail especially when you've covered all of AS maths and you may have to look at some year 13 maths such as sequences and series that then during the summer between year 12 and year 13 you can start practicing the actual papers and you can practice cross papers as there would be a lot of overlaps and basically build your time skills to make sure you're timing the papers right and your problem solving and critical thinking skills to be sure to get the top grades for these admissions tests as these were what admission tutors look at the most I would say in determining a candidate's intelligence and ability to do the course. Okay so these were just some of the things that I did to get offers to study computer science at university at top Russell Group universities. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like this video as I said before and subscribe to see more content. Bye!